Here at UF Health, we are committed to the power of together. These stories reflect the tremendous collaboration among our faculty and staff, whose commitment to patient safety ensures that quality remains job one. Our patients are at the heart of everything we do. Together, we are striving for the best clinical outcomes and the most attentive and positive experience for those we serve. Rhonda's role in our system is to provide shelter service to and from the Med Plaza, and she's been an employee of UF Health for approximately 18 years now. And she definitely started noticing that um, patients who are scheduled for appointments, especially early in the morning, have a difficult time finding wheelchairs. Um, so one day she noticed that, and she ended up having to get off the shuttle and assist in the patient locating a wheelchair. Based on um, the experience with that patient, Rhonda then proceeded to put up a suggestion on the UF Health Bridge um, and basically provide a suggestion that we provide wheelchairs to patients that are coming in for surgeries in the morning. Based off of that suggestion, we then form a team and that team consisted of myself, one of my managers, as well as volunteer services, security, um, and quality. And together as a team, we came up with a solution to help fix the, the problem that Rhonda suggested. That solution uh, was basically to maintain a PAR level. Um, so basically in the morning, my transport staff will go ahead and supply um, wheelchairs to the front circle. Um, so mainly the west entrance, the east entrance, as well as the volunteers desk. And we typically provide anywhere from three to five wheelchairs, depending on how many wheelchairs we're able to round up the night before. And throughout the day, we keep replenishing those areas. Rhonda's suggestion was great because she was um, considered a non-clinical employee, but that didn't mean that her suggestion wasn't valid. And ultimately, we all play a role in patient care, regardless if you're a shuttle driver, patient transport, an EVS worker, we all play a role in patient care and patient satisfaction. So any suggestions that any employee have is greatly appreciated because it then implement policies as in the case of what Rhonda did in suggestion that we provide wheelchairs. The scenario for the patient was that of um, a 41-week pregnant lady who had had a prior cesarean delivery. Um, she had presented in early labor. That specifically for patients with um, prior cesarean delivery, you want them to let you know if they begin to have pain that's continuous, and especially if you have pain in between contractions. At the time, we understood the risk involved with her. We initiated that she should have a blood type and cross match for two units, realizing the risk of uterine rupture in someone with a prior cesarean delivery. And that happened to be the scenario here because as um, shortly afterwards, the patient felt she was having pain in between contractions. She rated her pain nine out of 10 and she rightfully informed a nurse she called uh, chief resident for the day, Dr. Patrick, who immediately went to the patient bedside. The abdominal exam revealed that it was extremely tender to palpation. She was barely able to palpate. So she recognized at that time the significance of the finding and then she called my attention to the patient. We made a quick assessment and called the patient for a start cesarean delivery. It is very important because we are recognized the significant morbidity both to the mom and to the baby um, in settings of uterine rupture. But thankfully, she was in the hospital and um, we were able to, you know, make, uh, to intervene before any untoward consequences. I just happened to be the captain of the ship for that day. But the good outcomes, in, and indeed any outcome, is a function of the collaboration of the entire team. Don't forget, when you talk of the collaboration, you have to include the patient in it. So the patient was appropriately informed of what to expect and to inform you if anything changes, and that exactly was what she did. So she called us out immediately, and then the nurse that was in charge called out to the resident. She followed the chain of command. The resident called the attending that was on board. I was there immediately, and we called the anesthesia team. Anesthesia um, was initiated appropriately in a timely fashion, 
and within a couple minutes the baby was delivered. Well, this is tertiary hospital. So our goal is to be able to make impact on the patient's life and in the, in, the, in the quality of health of the community. So if we, by one step at a time, one patient at a time, attain that overall goal, I think this is good for us, it's good for the hospital, it's good for the community as a whole. I think um, we're in the right direction. As medical interpreters, my colleagues and me, we serve as the bridge of communication between the patients and providers to make sure that the patients understand the diagnosis and treatments, and also we translate their discharge instructions, or also known as after-visit summary. It is also so important because for a patient to listen to their instructions and their diagnosis and their treatment in their own language makes a big difference in their understanding and compliance of their treatment. I was called to translate the discharge instructions for this particular patient to the pediatric floor. Uh, this particular patient is very well known to me and my colleagues due to the complexity of her medical case. Um, when I was translating the discharge instructions, I realized that one very important medication was noted to stop. I knew that this patient needs this medicine daily as part of her treatment plan. I then went ahead and contacted the provider to ensure that indeed this medication needed to be discontinued. Uh, the provider then verified that the patient needed to continue taking this medication and they corrected it in the after visit summary and I finished translating it with the correct medication instructions. Because of this error that I caught and many others that my colleagues and I have caught in the past, the quality department implemented the after visit summary improvement team. They implemented this, this um, improvement team in order to avoid uh, major issues or errors like this and to uh, make it more simple for the patients to be able to follow it. We started the Great Catch Award because we realized there were so many people um, delivering care that were doing just great and wonderful things. We wanted to recognize the work that they're doing. Um, and it's often said that a culture, um, the, the real good part of a culture is the things that it celebrates. And we thought it was important to really recognize people who are going above and beyond to protect our patients. We're one big team and, and in order to deliver care, healthcare is a team sport um, and patient safety is everybody's responsibility. The care that you deliver um, should really be uh, the care that you want for yourself, for your, your husband, your wife, your child, always thinking to be on the other side. And that's really what we're, we're about. I just want to thank all of our Great Catch Award winners today. You're really making a big difference in the lives of our patients. And perhaps my biggest hope for this program is that next year we'll need a much bigger venue, perhaps the O'Connell Center or maybe even the Griffin Hill Stadium so that we can really um, expand and recognize all the great care that's delivered to our patients every day. Thank you.